What is up, my sweet sugar bushes? Welcome to another episode of Crime and Cosmetics. As you can already tell, I've got my tape on because I'm going to try something with this look that we get. What? 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 Already, you already got treats. You're not getting any more. No. Absolutely not. Go lay down. Go. You're not getting nothing from me. Go lay down. Yeah, go and get. Go and get. Go and get. You're not getting anything, so. Anyways, um, I'm just going to be doing the black lines right up here. It's like what I've done before. But uh, the case we're covering today is Orville Lynn Majors. Kind of a long one, to be honest with you. Um, also known as the Angel of Death. So that's cool. I hope you're having a fabulous morning. Mine's, well, it's almost 4 p.m. here. So technically it's morning to me because I woke up about an hour ago. But it'd be like that sometimes. Whatever, let's get started. So Orville was born April 24th, 1961 in Lytton, in Lytton, Indiana. Not sure, but that's what it sounds like. So he took care of his grandmother as a teen, which ultimately is what led him into nursing. Now, his father, there isn't a whole lot about his childhood, I will tell you that. Not a whole lot to, yeah, there really just is not a whole lot of documentation of when he was a kid. Now his father was a coal miner though, so I'm gonna go ahead uh, go ahead and assume Orville's family was very poor because of what the coal companies did to coal miners back in the day and even, you know, now. But um, I'm just, that's just an assumption. I don't know if that's fact, but since his father being a coal miner, that's what I'm going to assume. So as a teen, Orville had to take care of his grandmother. Um, and that's, that said, what it, is what led him into the nursing profession. Describe, he was just described as like a big teddy bear, very, very likable, just like a good, solid person all around. Nobody had really any negative things to say about him. When you were in his presence, you felt comfortable. He was very warm, comforting, and just likable in general. So when Orville is 26, he moves in with Andrew Harris. Now this is around 1987. So he lives with him until December of 1995. I remember that name because it's going to come up again in the future. 1989, Orville uh, graduates from the National Medical School of Practical Nursing. He starts working in the ICU in Vermilion County Hospital in Clinton, Indiana. Uh, we're going to call it VCH for now. It was a very, very small hospital it only had about 56 beds uh, he worked I'm sorry he worked in the ICU and the ICU was very small um, it only had about 56 beds Clinton itself only had around 5,000 people that lived there in 1991 he took a higher paying job in Tennessee but by 1993 he was back at VCH for some reason so Orville was super popular among the elderly patients because they knew him to be very caring he was very tender Yes, baby, how can I help you? He uh, treated them essentially how they felt as his children. He cared for them very dearly, and when they were in his ICU, they knew they were good. They were in good hands. Psych. But that was true. He was very tender and very caring with them. So, in early of 1995, a co-worker realizes, kind of, you know, gets the little heebie-jeebies and is like, you know, we've had a lot of deaths in the ICU lately, and that's not common. You know, we don't, we're not a big hospital, so we shouldn't be having a lot of deaths. Um, and a lot of the nurses even started, you know, questioning their skills as nurses because of the amount of deaths that have been happening. So the, so they start looking at the deaths from 1995 to the past years and, and comparing them. Now, the deaths were very, very low before a certain somebody started showing up to work. So in 1990, 29 out of 394 patients in the ICU died. In 1991, 24 out of 324 patients in the ICU died. 1992, 25 out of 356 died. But in 1994, around when Orville started working, and this, it's weird, because I keep saying Orville. Orville Peck is my one of my favorite country artists, so I keep thinking of him. That's who I think of in this story when I say this name. Um, but in 1994, there were 101 out of 351 patients' deaths in the ICU. Um, he, like, it's, it's baffling, because he's just straight up fucking murdering people. Like, and, and nobody, and, it, you know, it's... Back in the 90s, it's in, the, it's in a hospital, so no one really thinks, you know, a nurse would do such a thing. But it's the, the, the comparison 
of of deaths is is insane you know that's more than half more than triple so like i said prior to 1994 the average deaths in the icu probably were about 31 and then they skyrocket to 101 no sir something's wrong registered nurse don styrick uh she notices that Orville has been on duty for all of these, like 90% of the deaths that have been happening, that Orville is signed in on duty. Like he's been there for almost twice as many as the nearest contender. So uh, March 7, 1995, Don decides to share this um, information with the hospital's president and CEO, John Link. So Don goes to John and is like, hey bud, um, I just want to let you know that this sling blade looking guy has been in here. He's a nurse. Don't worry, he works here. But he's been in here for most of the deaths in the ICU. Um, we're a little suspicious of him. Maybe you could, I don't know, take a gander at this uh, incident we got going on here. And John's like, of course, I'm on it. Gotcha. So he ends up suspending Orville with pay, like a cop. Um, and starts investigating. He doesn't tell Orville why he's suspended, though. He just says, hey, yeah, take a break. You know, you've been so good at what you're doing. Uh, we'll see you again soon. So you haven't gotten that box in years, and now you're going to go ahead and just plop one in and make all the noise possible? Is that what's happening? If you want to see what my cat's doing right now, here, I'll post a picture of it. I got you. Um, so while Orville is on suspension, John calls the 5-0 and he's like, hey, what's up guys? Um, got a bit of a killing problem here in my ICU. Maybe you want to come check it out? I don't know. So the police are like, murder? That's like our specialty in junk. We'll be right there. And they skedaddle on down to the hospital. Now, meanwhile, this is a very small town and the hospital staff and the police don't want to alarm anybody by basically being like, hey, uh, there might be a serial killer in the hospital that you go to. The only hospital you can go to. Um, so just, you know, be on the lookout. But so they are trying to keep it under wraps. They're trying to keep the press off this. Um, they are doing their best to keep everyone quiet because they don't want to alarm anybody. Now, I kind of understand it, but I'm also like, you know, people have a right to know, but I get it. It's the only hospital they can go to. So I understand wanting to, you know, keep it under wraps. And it's just a PR fucking nightmare, so cool, I get it. But the nurses of the hospital are pissed, obviously, because they want to talk about it. They want to speak about it. They want to be like, hey, you know, like, this is a problem. This is somebody we've been working with. Like, what if it was one of us or what have you? But, like, this was also, you know, this wasn't, like, an uncommon thing in the hospital. They even made jokes that Orville was, like, an angel of death because so many patients died under his care while he was there. Um, which, you know, when you live, when, when you work in a hospital and you work as, in the ICU nonetheless and you see a lot of death, I would imagine you're going to have to... Um, have a dark-ish sense of humor, <clears throat> but I, I would imagine if they actually 110% suspected that Orville was murdering patients, they would not be joking about it, but, but you gotta keep the humor light when working around death constantly, or it'll eat you alive, I suppose. So the nurses themselves were afraid to speak out against the hospital, because they would, they were afraid to bring b bad PR, essentially, you know, this is like the only hospital in this town, so they, do you hear that? Sister! Hey, chill out. I know it's the only box you can fit into because you're so big, but I need you to take it easy. Okay? Are you settled in now? All right. Goodness gracious, can't get nothing done around this house. You you feel me? Um, but I know, you know, like I said, if they if they had fully, seriously suspected that Orville was murdering patients, they would not be joking about it. But any hoozle, because of them wanting to talk about it and them wanting to shed light on the incident, they, some of the nurses get together and they write an, anon an anonymous letter to the editor of the paper and they say essentially, you know, that Orville is a modern day Kevorkian, like this is the issue they've got going on, and that the hospital is trying to cover up this incident. Incident. So not long after the attorney general gets involved, he begins investigating the hospital for misconduct, and they end up asking the state board to suspend Orville's nursing license for this investigation. Now mind you, they haven't told Orville why he was suspended for work. He doesn't know really what's going on. So the board of nursing 
uh, voted to suspend his license for 90 days because that was the amount of time they could suspend his license and not have to tell him that it's suspended or why it's suspended. You feel me? So essentially, they're trying to kind of like keep, stop him from figuring out, figuring out what they are doing. So while the hospital is tiptoeing in the Jordans, Orville's just vibing at home like, I guess I got paid vacation, dog, whatever. Again, you know, I, I could understand why they didn't want to do this because if he, if he, if they're like, oh, he's like, oh, they suspended my license even though, you know, by standards that they don't know what I'm doing but I haven't done anything wrong, I, they probably kind of are on to what I've been doing. I should leave town. So the news media figures out that Orville's license has been suspended before Orville does, but eventually... Uh, John Link does tell Orville, he's like, hey, bud, your license, you're suspended right now without any pay. So, and to prevent future, uh, you know, to prevent future deaths from not happening, uh, the Attorney General files to have Orville's license permanently revoked, stating that Orville had performed certain tasks without the direction of a doctor or a nurse. And so Orville receives another 90-day suspension for unsupervised work habits. So really right now what they're doing is they're, they're just looking to find anything they can to revoke Orville's license. Um, because, you know, they're aware that you can look at the numbers. I mean, how are you going to go? You're going to go from an average of 34 deaths in the ICU before this guy started working there. And then he starts working there and you have 101 deaths and he is present for more than half of them, that's that's not just a coincidence. Like, you're not, people just aren't dying. Like, these healthy people are coming in and then they're dying. I was gonna do some corpse paint for this look, but uh, I didn't have any white corpse paint and I had the white cream paint, but that shit don't, that does not dry fast enough. So we're sticking to this until I can go get some acrylic paint. So on December 18th, uh, Orville's license is finally suspended for a minimum of five years. So Orville packs his shit and he skedaddles back to his hometown where he opens a pet store. Odd choice, but who am I to judge? So while he's back in his hometown running this pet store, he for some reason decides to start going on talk shows like Montel Williams and Donahue and stuff like that and essentially proclaiming his innocence, saying that he's being wrongfully accused of this and that and the other, um, and I guess this was his I, his way of trying to get ahead of the press and, you know, make people, you know, see him as, like, the, the good guy and all this, and he's being wrongfully accused of this, but this story hadn't exactly broke yet. It was still kind of under wraps, and nobody really knew about it except for the people in the immediate area, so this backfired on him. This brought a lot of attention on this story because he's an idiot and tried to go proclaim his innocence before he was even, you know officially accused of stuff. So, uh, meanwhile, officials were spending millions of dollars on this investigation. I'm talking to, just to see if Orville was murdering his patients. The investigation, in all, took three years, and a shitload of stuff was discovered. So police and medical professionals were working the case. They started reviewing medical files from 1991 to 1996. And during the 22 months that Orville worked in this ICU, there were 147 ICU patients that passed away. Can you guess how many uh, Orville was on duty for? That's right, a total whopping of 121 of them. Talk about red flags and alarm bells. That's insane. When Orville was on the clock, a death occurred every 23.1 hours. And when he wasn't working, a death occurred every 551.6 hours. So that gives you an idea of how quickly he was just murdering these people. So the police are looking at this and they're like, that's weird, that's really suspicious. If Orville was working, the, de the, the, the risk of death was like 43 times higher than it usually was. So police start looking at the records of these patients who have died and they're noticing these patterns. The patients who had died on Orville's watch had similar EKG results, they all had high levels of potassium in their body upon death um, and it's known that uh, potassium chloride can regulate someone's heartbeat but on in large doses it can kill them and potassium levels are naturally high when a person dies 
So they were like, okay, well, that's a little weird that all these, you know, these AK EKG results are the same and they all had excessive potassium in their system uh, around the time of death. But like I said, you know, it's hard to figure out if someone died of, let's say, a potassium chloride overdose because there are already excessive amounts of potassium in the system when the body dies. But a good a portion of these people had really high blood pressure right before they had passed away and none of them had pre-existing conditions of high blood pressure in the past. So that was another red flag. And also, the patients who died when he wasn't working, the very few that did, uh, they didn't have high blood pressure when they had passed. And on, and, and you know, like I said, a lot of his patients came in and were doing just fine. They, you know, they were in the ICU, of course, uh, or some of them were sent to the I. They they went to the regular hospital, and the doctor was like, "All right, we're just going to put you in the ICU so our nurses can monitor you before we discharge you, just to make sure everything's fine." full recovery, nothing wrong with them, and then they get sent to the ICU and Orville's working and all of a sudden they fucking die. It didn't make any sense. July 1994 to December 1994, mortality rates in the ICU were at epidemic levels. In the ICU, Orville worked and was the only place experiencing high amounts of death. So the police ended up exhuming, uh, exhuming 15 bodies of the people that had died while Orville was on duty to investigate further. And like I said, the nurses had already been suspect of, or of Orville in the beginning. Um, they often joked that he was a common link between all these people dying. You know, Nurse, Mar Nurse Martha Starkey has even said that, you know, the, the coincidence of him just being there is alarming enough. Sharon Calvert, which is another nurse, she worked with Orville during some of these death and she, deaths, and she began even uh, questioning her own skills because the patient kept dying. But again, you know, when you work in, when you're around death so often, um, you kind of got to have a sense of humor, a dark sense of humor, but I've, I've, I know if they even suspected that he was doing this to people, they wouldn't be joking about it. I don't know if I should add another color in the, uh, the uh, edges of my eye with this. I think I've done this look before, but I just like the way um, the wings are. I do better wings with eyeshadow than I do liquid liner. Jesus. Oh, I did already do this look. I'm so stupid. I was like, I was like, man, I really like this green and black. Can't believe I've, I haven't done this before. And then, like, in my head, it kind of flashed an Instagram post I made. And I was like, fuck. So the investigation is continuing on. Investigators are trying to figure out why patients are dying uh, while Orville is on shift. I'll let you in on a little secret. He might be killing them. So as police begin investigating Orville more, they start kind of digging into his personal life. They're, they're talking to his friends and stuff like that, and they figure out that, that around this time, Orville's personal life is going a bit wary. And that around July 1994, Orville had had some kind of incident where he went through a major personality change. Uh, you know, he was once seen as this very caring, gentle individual, uh, and due to this personality change, he had, it, it just, it wasn't like that anymore. And that's around when these mysterious deaths started happening. You know, this personality could have changed, could have been from anything. You know, maybe the the um, stress that came from working in the hospital or the fact that he was shooting meth. Um, so, you know, either one of those things. But he became irritable, very wild-eyed, as people would describe him. He got very hostile with any bit of criticism someone threw his way. Uh, to say the least, he turned into a bit of an asshole. So, meanwhile, during this time, the hospital was having some shortages in their pharmacy. They were shorting, they were reporting shortages of epinephrine, um, potassium chloride, and some other prescription drugs. Now, this was a small hospital, and the pharmacy was very, very relaxed. You know, there wasn't like uh, bigger hospitals. You would be like, okay, you go into the pharmacy, you sign this, sign that. You know, you're you're going through four or five different people before you get what you need. The small hospital wasn't like that. You just kind of walked in, uh, pharmacy was open, and then you grabbed what you needed and bounced. So basically, you just go in and take as many perk 30s as you want, baby. Um, which is wild, but Orville had been seen walking around work with a bag full of fresh syringes and needles and stuff like that. Essentially, it was a hype kit. If you, I mean, um, I'll put up a picture of a hype kit so you can see what it is. But it was essentially a hype kit. That hype kit is what he would use to inject himself and patients with a lot of drugs. A dear friend of mine told me to do some purple in here and then use some some of this highlighter to make it iridescent. So let's see how it looks. So Rhonda Culpepper, who was a you know housekeeper at the time for the hospital, she reports that she saw Orville walk into the room of a patient while he with his hype kit 
he injected the patient with something, and then 15 minutes later, the patient died. Um, that is, I feel like that's something you should tell people when it happens, not when there's an investigation, but, you know, mind, kind of a mind your own business thing, I guess. And this starts this, you know, these people talking about them seeing Orville do things that they feel like he shouldn't have done. Another lady recalls Orville giving her grandmother tranquilizer when he was never instructed to do so. Um, another individual overheard Orville talking about a patient who was pressing the nurse call button so they you know they were obviously having some kind of issue they pressed their nurse call button to get a nurse to come see them and they overheard Orville just saying let the patient die just let them die don't go see them let them die. Um, this attitude of being very caring, a gentle, kind person, obviously just became, he became the complete opposite. He became a fucking monster. And it freaked people out, uh, because he was known to be such a kind, loving person, but, you know, sometimes meth does that to people. You know, Orville just had this awful attitude while he was at work. He regular, regularly made fun of people in poverty. Um, he just was known now as this big asshole that nobody wanted to work with. Uh, there was another instance where someone came in and, you know, asked how he was doing, what, it, what was going on. And keep in mind, he is sitting in the room with this patient while their family is there. And Orville just looks at this person and goes, oh yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm just waiting for this uh, patient to die. And there were instances of... Whenever, uh, you know, the other nurses would go on break and leave the ICU, a patient would die. And there were many times Orville would call a code blue, which means a patient is dying, before the patient even went to, you know, any kind of respiratory failure or what, what have you. So, a former friend of Orville's named Paul is interviewed by investigators, and Paul tells investigators that Orville believed... Uh, said that he hated old people and that they should all be gassed. Calling them a waste and telling them him that they aren't worthy of treatment. So they're like, man, this dude really fuck, fucking hated old people, apparently. So police get a warrant to search the house that Orville had lived in with uh, his buddy Andrew. So in October of 1996, they get this warrant. They begin searching the house. They find six vials of potassium chloride uh, as well as multiple boxes of epinephrine, uh, two containers of nitroglycerin, and a lot of asthma and, like, breathing medication. So essentially everything that was coming up short in the pharmacy, uh, there was evidence of it in Orville's house, or his former residence. Police are like, okay, that's a little weird, that's suspicious, so they end up searching, uh his van and i think the van belonged to it belonged to somebody but or uh, they were letting orville use it um and in that van they find more boxes of potassium chloride uh epinephrine and things of that nature so their working theory is that he's been poisoning pa patients with potassium chloride but it's very very hard to prove that after death Investigators begin looking into a handful of patients that they suspect have died under Orville's care uh, intentionally from him so they can further investigate this theory that they were being poisoned with potassium chloride. So they look into a, a handful of individuals. They didn't pick all of them because that would just take too long. So one individual in particular, Dorothea Hickson, she comes into the hospital for a routine uh, fluid removal of her lungs. This was not something that was new to her. This was not, uh, you know, it wasn't something that she was just now experiencing for the first time. This was a regular thing. She would regularly come into the hospital and get, uh, fluid removed from her lungs. Now, so she's getting this done, and after she gets the fluid removed, the, uh, doctor puts her in the ICU to be monitored until she is gonna be until she's discharged essentially so the lady the the woman's daughter and granddaughter are in the waiting room and Orville comes out and tells them oh hey uh, your mother suffered a heart attack or a stroke um, I don't think she's gonna make it so you may want to come back and see her now she's slipping into a coma so when the ladies come into the room, Dorothea is coherent, she's talking, she's up, she doesn't look like she has suffered a stroke or a heart attack or anything, um, and she's definitely not slipping into a coma. So while they're talking to her, they watch as Orville slips something in, like, injects something into her IV, and then leans in and he kisses her on the forehead and says, everything's gonna be all right pumpkin and not even moments later 
Dorothea's eyes roll into the back of her head and she code blues and dies. Orville is dead ass just murdering people in front of their family. That's insane. I guess, I mean, I don't know, dude, like, was... <laughs> The personality shift Orville must have had, uh, had must have been just insane. I guess, I mean, he was shooting meth and stuff like that. So I can imagine, you know, uh, amphetamines and addiction will do that to you, uh, I guess, to an extent. But Jesus Christ, he went from being this so-called, you know, very loving, charismatic individual that everybody enjoyed being around. You know, his elderly patients you saw him as very tender, very gentle. And, you know, he... he if, if your elderly patients love you and they see you as t you're very gentle and stuff like that, you probably don't have the mindset that the elderly should die and they're not worthy of treatment. But once he started shooting meth and going through this personality change, all that, you know, his, his entire demeanor changed. He thought old people weren't worthy. Uh, he was constantly heard saying that they should be die that should that they should die they should be uh, gassed uh, euthanized and stuff like that and he's just a completely different person than he was that's insane and and he was at a point to where like three people died within two hours of him being there so he murdered just three people within two hours of him being at work and it's insane the balls on this man like he just didn't care he was like i you know i'm just gonna go murder people like no one's stopping me yet so i'm just gonna keep doing it until i get caught so on september 8th of 1999 they finally have enough evidence to put orville on trial and charge him with these murders um they move it to an entire separate county because the publicity of this case and and how the town was so small that it would be hard for him to get a fair uh, a fair trial because everyone knows about it and everybody knows who he is. Uh, the jurors were sequestered, which essentially means they were isolated, um, uh, hidden away, kind of, so they wouldn't be influenced by outside uh, by outside forces, for lack of better words. So the trial lasted a total of six weeks. Um, since the jurors were sequestered, they were isolated from everybody. Uh, regularly they were taken out um, with police uh, to go fishing and have recreational time and, six, and stuff like that, but six weeks, good lord. So prosecutors alleged that seven victims uh, had died of unnatural causes. Again, they, they were only charging him with as many, you know, they were only charging him with the ones that they had investigated because there were so many of them, they, they just possibly couldn't go through all of them. Uh, if they wanted to get him before he killed more people. So, prosecutors allege that the seven victims died of unnatural causes. The defendant, the defense, obviously, is like, oh, well, they all died of natural causes, blah, 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 blah. And that it wasn't Orville's fault because nature took them. Oh, and also, I was looking up salaries of coal miners in the 60s and such. I'm not sure if, you know, coal mining was not... I, someone correct me, because I know about, like, you know, when they were getting paid with coal scripts and stuff like that during the Cold Wars, it was not a good... Uh, you know, they were very, they were in poverty. Uh, I don't know if the wages got better during the 60s and 70s. Um, I know, you know, kids as young as 14 were down there working in the mines, but someone, you know, enlighten me on that, please. Because uh, I couldn't find a definitive answer of what the amount of money they were making back then. So at the end of, the all, of it all, the jury deliberated for around, for about three days. They found this POS guilty of six of the seven murders, but they were deadlocked on the last one. So they could just go ahead and convict Orville. They called for a mistrial on that one last murder. But for of those six of those murders, um, they found him guilty for, he was sentenced to 60 years in prison for each of them, uh, spending time behind bars for a grand, grand slam total of 360 years. Uh, after his conviction, a, another three, uh, th sorry, 63 additional families filed complaints with the Indiana Department of Insurance claiming improper peer review of medical staff. Ended up, you know, being awarded an a, uh, undisclosed sum of money for their troubles and loss and such. Back in March 2nd of 2000, uh, Orville had bidded for a new uh, a new trial, uh, claiming juror misconduct and stuff like that, that they were swayed by outside forces, this, that, and the other. The judge that he had sent that bid to basically rejected it and was like, no, that's not, no, eh, no. Nah. Uh, but any hoozle, I'm not going to get too much into that because uh, really nothing really came out of it. But on, sept but on September 21st of 2017, Orville uh, dies in prison of heart failure. 
Um, so, good riddance. And that is the story of the Angel of Death, Orville Lynn Majors, who was, <laughs> went into a profession to help and take care of people and ends up fucking murdering them, dude. What a piece of shit. Let me put on some eyeliner and stuff and we'll pick uh, next week's murder. Alright, I think that's gonna be our finished look. I don't think it turned out too bad, but, um... Stacking colors, I'm still not that good at. I'm not sure what color should be blended, what color shouldn't. Yaze, blase, yaze. But I think it turned out all right. But that is the story of the Angel of Death, Orville Lynn Majors. So let's pick our murder for next, or our crime for next week. All right. Who do we got here? This one keeps... Sticking, oh, 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 there's two of them, hold on. Sticking between my fingies. Okay, so looks like next week is the Columbine shooting. Um, I don't know if I put this in here or if someone suggested this. I think one of you suggested this because I don't usually put in super high profile cases, but looks like uh, we will be going over the Columbine shooting, which was one of the first most horrific school shootings in the United States information with that one so i think that's going to be another longer one because of how information heavy it is thank you so much for stopping by for another episode of crime and cosmetics i'm super excited for these weekly vlog vlogs to start coming uh, I, I had some stuff recorded last week but i was training a new person at work and i was like i'm not going to make them be a part of my videos so uh, i'm really excited to put one out this week and i will take you along with me to work and some other things that i got going on throughout the week but as always if you have a case you want covered leave it down in the comments of this video and i will throw it in our murder pot check out uh the podcast snacks packs it's not true crime it's just me and my friend goose going over some things uh we cover a different topic every season uh this season we're doing a decade in review uh, i do have a true crime podcast in the works though so be on the lookout for that i've been streaming a lot of horror games on twitch as well as first person shooters i will link my other social medias in the description of this video Join our coven, it's our Discord server. We get together, play Among Us, stuff like that, Apex. Uh, I will leave the link to that in the description of this video as well. But thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for your support. It means the world to me. Uh, I hope to see you guys back next week. Uh, as always, be kind to others. Most of all, be kind to yourselves. I hope you have the best day ever. And if you need help, please, please, please reach out because the world wouldn't be the world it is without you. I love you so much. I'll see you next week.